بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد وعلا علی وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد احبت فی اللہ اہل السنہ اہل ایمان strives their best to adhere to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah and part of that understanding and part of that Iman and part of that righteousness which we try to strive for and which we should try to strive for is by being cautious with our tongues and in the example of the Salaf of this Ummah, or from the Salaf of this Ummah, there was those who preceded us, and likewise in this time, who may have some good, who may have something from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what overcomes them is their desires with regards to their tongue meaning they eat the flesh of their brothers and sisters with ease and they speak evil about the ulama of Ahl sunnah and they're quick to take people off the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they're quick to backbite others and we know the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which shows us that the one who backbites and eats the flesh of his or her brother that they are mustahik for the torment of the grave. The Prophet ﷺ passed by some graves and he said, إِنَّهُمْ لِيُعَذِّبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذِّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٍ أَمَّا أَحَدَهُمَ فَكَانَ لَا يَسْتَتَرُ مِنَ الْبَوْرِ وَأَمَّا آخِرُ فَكَانَ يَمْشِ بِالنَّمِيمَةِ The Prophet ﷺ was walking by some graves and in another narration, it is reported that they were the graves of the Jews, of some Jews, of the Ummah that came before us. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily, they are being punished. So that affirms first the punishment of the grave. And they're being punished for something which the people take lightly. As for one of them, they did not properly wash themselves before, uh, you know, after urinating, meaning making a stinja or what have you. And as for the other, is they used to carry tails between the people. They used to have namima. They used to spread rumors or spread uh, the speech of others with the intent to spread wickedness. So we have to be careful. We have to look at ourselves. When we spread things, is it to spread wickedness? Is it to spread good? Are we intervening in the affairs of the ulama? Are we intervening in the affairs of the tulab al-ilm in order to spread wickedness? Or are we spreading good? Listen to this, which shows us how a person who has honor in one aspect can destroy the good they have in this life. So what about the next? Qala ibn Muflih, rahimahullah ta'ala fi adab, الشريعة وقال أبو حارث سمعت سمعت أبا عبد الله غير مرة يقول ما تكلم أحد في الناس إلا سقط وذهب حديثه قد وذهب حديثه قد كان بالبصرة رجل يقال له إفتاس كان يروي عن عن أعمش والناس وكانت له مجالس وكان صحيح صحيح الحديث إلا أنه كان لا يسلم على لسانه أحد فذهب حديثه فذهب حديثه ابن مفلح رحمه الله تعالى said in his book آداب الشريعة he said that أبو حارث said he heard from Abu Abdullah. Abu Abdullah, I'm not sure if he's referring to Imam Ahmed, but he said, I heard from Abu Abdullah 
more than one time, more than one occasion, say, a person does not speak about people except that he will, he will fail or be humiliated or lose his stature and that his hadith will leave, will go. Meaning, because they were collectors of the narrations, so that this person, his hadith, will not be taken from, he will not be remembered, his musnid or whatever he collected, his book of hadith, it will not be uh, referred back to. His hadith that he collected and his narrations will be forgotten. And he said, in Basra, there used to be a man, this is in Iraq, modern day Iraq, uh, they say his name was Iftas, Iftas, oh Iftas. He used to narrate from Amish and and the people, and he used to have uh, sittings, meaning he used to have uh, people who would sit and take from him, and he used to have sound hadith, except that he was unable to control his tongue. You know, his tongue would not cease to speak about anyone. So then his hadith were forgotten, or his hadith were left. Ahabat al-Fillah, that's a great lesson for Ahlul Sunnah, for the Salafiyun. And that we should be reminded of the madhab of the salaf is being cautious of the tongue. And this madhab of the salaf comes from the madhab of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْلُ فِي مِيزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُ وَالْفَحِشَ الْبَدِيهِ There won't cease to be a, a, a deed heavier on the scale on the day of judgment than good manners. And verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So in the example of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have a great example. And from our Salaf, uh, from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have the best of examples. The best example. And from our Salaf, we have excellent examples to show us to be cautious of the tongue. And don't be hasty in speaking about others. And don't be hasty in to get into fitna. And don't be hasty to get into differences between the ulama. And don't be hasty to speak about the ulama. And don't be hasty to speak about the students of knowledge. And don't be hasty to speak about the du'at. And those people who are striving to adhere to kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of the salaf of this ummah. We're not talking about ahla bid'ah wa zambaka. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who are cautious with our tongues.